Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So Mac have a few hidden apps that not many people know about. But the one that I think is the greatest is Automator. What is Automator? Well then, it's an application that Apple have made that allows you to build custom workflows. Basically, a very easy way to automate a lot of tasks. So then, in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use it and some of the best workflows that you can create, in my opinion. So let's just jump straight in. So the first thing that I think is relevant is to show you how you can actually find it, where to find it. And the simplest way is to literally open up the search, so command space, and to literally type automator. And it should pop up like that. So click enter and it will open. So when you open up Automator, it will look something like this. And you'll have the ability to choose a type of document that you want to create. And I'm going to quickly go through the three main important ones. The first one is just a workflow. And this is basically when you're running something with inside of the Automator app. Mainly you'll be using this one. The next one I think is just as important is application. And these are basically a standalone workflow that you can run from anywhere. So let's say you had it on your desktop here. If you were to double click it, it would run it. So that would also be quite useful depending on what you're building. And the last one that I'm going to be talking about from here is quick action. And these can be added to like your finder, a touch bar if your Mac has one and other places. It's just a very quicker way to run these workflows that you are building. So basically, these um, um, eight different um, options that you have are just different ways of running your workflow. So now let me just create a basic workflow one so I can show you around about how to use it. So if you just go ahead and click choose and it will open it. There we go. So we're now inside our own workflow file. And in here, we can do so many different things, so many different options. As you can hear, see here, just scrolling through the list, there are hundreds and hundreds of different things that you can do to automate on your computer. And I'm not going to go through all of them now because they're, it would just get a bit too boring. And I'm sure it'd be a lot more fun for you to play around with them on your own. So I'm now going to show you the top ones that I think that you should be using. So the first one is a workflow that will automatically delete files up that have been in your downloads folder for a certain amount of time. And the reason why this is useful is because when you're downloading files and applications from the Internet, it just clutters up your downloads folder. And especially if you haven't used some of those things in your downloads folder past, like, let's say, 90 days, you just don't want them sitting there. So we can create a workflow that will automatically delete any items that have been sitting in your downloads folder for more than 90 days. So let me show you how to do this. If you head to files and folders and then you go down and click on find finder items like this and then drag it in. When you've dragged it in like this, go ahead and click on the search and click on downloads. And then make sure that all of the following are true. And then here in any content, switch it to date last modified and then is exactly and then specify 90 days. Apologies, not is exactly. It's not in the last 90 days. Apologies, that should be it. And now we want to add another one of these. We want to add the move finder items to bin. And if we drag this, there we go. So now if we are to run this, our, our downloads folder, any files that have been in there longer than 90 days will be moved to our finder items. And you can set this up so it would automatically, every day, periodically run this to make sure that your download folders are clean from files. This is a very useful workflow shortcut that I use all the time because it's just useful. It just frees up your downloads folder. Second important one that I think you should set up is one that will automatically rename loads of files. So let's say that you're importing loads of files from an external hard drive and they've all got a file name that you don't like. You can set up an automation on workflow that will automatically go through all of these and rename them. So let me show you how to do this. 
if we come down and click on get um, selected finder items like that and then drag it in and then if we go down and select on rename finder items and then drag that on as well it's going to pop up um, with a warning saying are you sure that you want to rename the files and that you and do you want to add a one that will copy these files to like your desktop you can add that if you want to however as i don't want duplicates of the files that we're renaming i'm going to click don't add and now this has opened up what we want to do is this so you can either be, there's loads of options based on your preferences so let's say all of the files you're importing had the name let's say um let's say day out like you went on a road trip and you've got all of these files and the name day out sequentially you could get it to be so it would go through and add the date or time to each of those files based on the time it was take created which i think is pretty cool and i've actually used this multiple times and there's, there's different options here based on your use cases so potentially you could have a sequ a, sequ a sequential one apologies i can't speak and you could get it to just increment through multiple numbers like this. I also use this quite often when I'm creating these YouTube videos to get it to cycle through these files, adding a certain number on because that works well in my workflow. But this is more of a personal preference based on what you are planning to do with it. And then again, you want to save this. So let's say you wanted to save it to your desktop. And then what you can do is select the files that you want to rename and basically just drag it into that thing. And it would go through the process of renaming them all, which I think is pretty cool and actually quite useful. Third really useful one which I like is to open specific URLs. So when you open up your browser, it will open up the URLs that you specify. So let's say whenever you boot up your browser, you always go to, let's say, I don't know, The Verge or you go to the Sunday Times every time you open it up, you can get it to automatically do this. So to, let me show you how to do this. So if you go to internet and then you go to get specific URLs, you can drag that in and then you can come down here and just add and remove different ones. So let's just say you've added all of them. I'm just gonna leave Apple here as the example. So to add other ones, you need to go click on add and then paste in the URLs that you want to open. Once you've got all of them that you want to open, you can come and click on the display web pages and then drag that on. And now this will open when you open up the browser. I think that's a pretty cool thing to do. And I use it quite often, actually, because I've got a specific set of um, websites that I visit every time I open up my browser. But that really brings us to the end of like my top three ones that I'd recommend that you could create. If I find any other useful ones in the future, I might create a video about them because I honestly can't express how useful the Automator app is on macOS. But anyway, that now brings us to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing as well as smashing the like button as it would really help it out in the YouTube algorithm. But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.